and my personal belief is that heaven's really kind of what everything is, but that's just me. But I don't think that you're locked into going there if that's not what you're ready for. And if we understood that, it would be a little frightening to understand that, I think. People are kind of nervous about too much information. <laughs> what do you think? Right. Uh, absolutely. You know, one of the, the big questions that I have is, can you define what a ghost is? There you go. And we all have our thoughts of what a ghost is, but with all honesty, there's no definition because it's unknown. Right. I are agree we with you. Really truly, are we really truly communicating with the spirit of a deceased loved one? I've had experiences where I believe 100% yes, but is that because they are still on this earth roaming freely to where we can't see them physically or is that because they've left this earth and they've went to another realm of existence that could be a parallel universe where we're both vibrating at the same time and we're communicating to them on another version of earth where they are still alive that's something that is truly a very unique possibility but we don't know that. There's no way that we can find that out because we don't have the equipment. We don't have the technology to be able to compare those. What can we think, have that? What yeah. do you think when you bring the string theory in? Because it does explain spontaneous experiences, right? But I don't right. see then, it explaining residual hauntings. Uh, well, why like why couldn't it be? I mean, why, in, in, in string theory also, I think it could kind of combine that with the ability of time uh, displacement. So if there's such a tragic event, let's just say, for example, like the Titanic, if that is such a unique event that affects multiple universes that if you're at that same scenario or same location and then it's vibrating at the right frequency, the lack of a better explanation, um, why couldn't that explain a residual haunt? To leave a stain well, on time itself. I'm, because I think the string is more random. That was my chair. I apologize. But the, I've always considered strain to be a much more random experience theoretically obviously uh, I agree with you it is there is a lot of randomness in string theory but at the same time there's the unknown of string theory what is the constant of all you know higher right. intelligence God you know dark matter there's so many things that we don't know or understand that we even really try to understand that could be affecting them. So that's those unknowns would, leave it wide open. That's why I would just so love to go and talk to the people at CERN who are trying to achieve some of this. I, don't you think that would be a great conversation? <laughs> what have you seen while you were yes. doing this? I just... Absolutely. They're the only people. I think yeah, I do think it could be pretty great. Yeah, but, I mean, they're uh, the only people you know, that might know. You go deep enough into string theory, it's just, it's as incredibly complicated as parallel dimensions, and it's as incredibly simple as if we really think we're the only one, wow, we're idiots. <laughs> I agree, <laughs> because there's no way. There is too much... Yeah, even if you start talking about UFOlogy and life on other planets and stuff, it just will blow your mind because how do we know that all of these exoplanets that are being discovered don't each have their own creation story and their own Bible and their own experiences with their God? 
So they they absolutely could. And you know what some people call God, others will call science, others yeah. will call the, the flying spaghetti monster in the sky. You know, with <laughs> yeah. or without. You're and right. I'm not judgmental of any of them. As long as they realize that others are entitled to their belief system. Yes. And if their belief system is that they don't have a belief system, well, that's still their belief system. And that's it's what just they have a right to. Yes. There's just more than us, no matter what you call it. Well, let's put this in a perspective on something that we can all grasp here on Earth. You know, the Amazon rainforest is vast even with its deforestation, but that's another subject for another time. Um, True. But in one, square, in one square mile of the Amazon rainforest, there's over two and a half million different species of insects. That's in one mile of the rainforest. Yeah. So if we put that on a much broader scale of Earth, galaxy, we're insane to believe that we're the only intelligent life form Ever. And it's also insane to believe that that it doesn't come into play that you know, they don't have to be that much more intelligent than us. They just have different nope. evolution. And, and if where we have focused on some things, then they have focused on... Yeah, I mean, it can different places have different ideas. Even on our planet. And again, I use that term intelligent pretty loosely because. Well, yeah, what I'll tell you. Ours, but yeah, yeah. We might not be the best species all the time. <laughs> well, you know, we're the only ones that go out and actively destroy our environment. So I would agree that we are not the most intelligent species at all times. And it's sad and it's tragic. And you know, if you don't laugh about it, you're going to cry, right? But and you do what you can to help, but it sure does feel like you're you know, flinging the water out of the boat by teaspoons. Yeah, yeah, quite right. That well, has we a have hole just, in it. We, yeah. <laughs> Well, we have definitely gone down a rabbit hole here, and we are a little bit late for our break. We will be right back.
listening to WPHM Digital Broadcasting. The best in paranormal talk radio. And we are back live with Greg and Noah of the Supernatural and Paranormal University, as well as Paranormal Nights. They are some great investigators. And we have just been all down the rabbit holes. We have been enjoying things and you know, moving into string theory and all the other things. But I am so enjoying this conversation, guys. Thank you again for being here on Fate Radio. Very welcome, Kat. It's great talking with you. And Noah, we had discussed a little bit about having you come um, out with discussing your history that brought you into the paranormal field. And I know it's pretty personal and I'm sure pretty painful. If you're comfortable, I would enjoy people having an opportunity to know why this matters so to you. Oh, that's fine with me. It's uh, it, it's you know, good, bad, and different. It's it's just my background. Everybody's got one. <laughs> <laughs> True. Um, but, but if it can help others, as I'd like to think, I hope it does, or just let them know where I'm coming from, then I'll I'll freely discuss that or or answer questions to it or whatever you wish. I have no problem with that. Okay. Thank you. Well. You're welcome. Do you want to to just share your your history or? Okay, uh, I'll, I'll give you a synopsis, but feel free to tell me to hush or ask anything, or if anybody I never wants tell specific. You to hush. <laughs> <laughs> I do my best to to uh, take commands if given. So, well, um, I guess it really started out. Uh, when I wasn't much more than a toddler, I just I just found myself a lot more interested in Casper than other people. And when it was time to be scared of what was under the bed, and you know, jump from the door, uh, the light switch to the bed, I found myself going under the bed, like to, to find <laughs> out what was there. And I yeah. just had to know about Casper. And if even as a kid, if so many people believed in it, and I could hear them. And I, I had to know more. Um, so so I go, you know, we're supposed to be reading C, R, Jane, Run, Run, Dick, Run, like that stuff. And I'm asking the librarian for, like, religious theory and existential paranormal studies and, and things like that. But, you know, to, to jump out of the laughing part of it for a minute, um Couple of days before my birthday in uh, in Anderson Township, just really close to where we are right now in Cincinnati. Uh, unfortunately, my my father was was killed um, a couple doors down from where I was sleeping. And what happened in our house for the for the days for the weeks after that was uh, was you know for lack of a better way to say it. it the stuff out of what most people would consider to be a horror movie. And, you know, believe it, don't believe it, that's up to you, but I know fact, and this happened. And so do our neighbors and family members and other people that were in and out of the house. I mean, it was... I'll say it like, I, like I've mentioned before, you know, you laugh or you get freaked out if you see a plate flying in a movie or fryer, frying pans banging around or door slamming and, and you don't buy it or you know it can be faked until you're in a house that has that going on just like in a movie and, and it can really get your attention and terrify you um, from hearing of of screaming just that all-encompassing sense of fear no matter where you go 